This is the prevalence rate of ADHD and bipolar separately in children and adults. So ADHD is 8 to 10 percent in children, in adults is 4.4 percent. So if you compare the percentage numbers together, that's an inaccurate way of comparing. Why? Because the percentage number is dependent on the denominator. The denominator is the census of the number of people in that age category. So I just want to point out when you see numbers like this and you see percentages, make sure that if you're comparing percent A to percent B, the denominator is the same. If the denominator is not the same, then you're just looking at percentages, but they're actually independent of each other. For bipolar disorder in children, it's about 0.5%. And for adults, it's about 2.5%. That includes both bipolar 1 and bipolar 2. Differential diagnosis. So there's a few concepts here you have to keep in mind. Uh, one is differential diagnosis. That is, what's present, what is it, and what is it not. It's different than comorbidity, which is what's present and what's not. This is really a critical uh, aspect to making a diagnosis in your comprehensive evaluation, understanding differential diagnosis and coexisting diagnosis. And one of the complicating factors in your diagnostic assessment is emotion, emotion regulation. So this is looking at ADHD patients and bipolar adults, 150 ADHD patients, over 300 patients with bipolar disorder and some controls. They used two self-report scales that looked at emotion dysregulation. Higher mood liability versus controls for ADHD. The responsiveness, that is the affective responsiveness, was similar to bipolar disorder. ADHD subjects essentially differ from bipolar disorder patients on perceived intensity, but not on instability. What does this mean? If you think that mood symptoms are, fall under the diagnostic category of mood disorders and attentional problems fall under the ADHD, you're going to be making inaccurate diagnoses. If you look at the definitions of mania versus ADHD in the um, <clears throat> DSM-5 for children, this is just looking at children and adolescents, you know bipolar disorder is cyclical, it occurs episodically. There's also a reduced need for sleep in mania and hypomania. You don't see that in ADHD. <clears throat> you see distinct grandiosity in mania, hypomania, you don't really see that in ADHD, unless you have a narcissistic personality disorder and ADHD. And then the hyperactivity is usually uh, chronic and unchanging for ADHD and cyclical with bipolar disorder. Now, if these categorical distinctions were clear, you'd have no problem making a diagnosis of ADHD or bipolar disorder. What grows complicated is it's not a binary decision. It's not A or B. It's that A and B exist concurrently. And the question then becomes, how do you drop the symptoms into appropriate diagnostic categories? This is one of my favorite slides. This is a slow burn slide here for this audience. It's usually pretty self-evident what's going on. And why do I show this slide? Because what's your diagnostic conclusion? Is this guy psychotic and believed he was James Bond and the truck would turn into a submarine? Did he get distracted by the bikini on the beach? Does he have a GPS system like Siri on my phone that says, well, take a left when you get to the end of the dead end? Or my favorite is, he's getting divorced and he said, over my dead body is my wife getting my truck. The point here is this is your evaluation. Your evaluation is a snapshot in time. And if you only focus on presenting symptoms, you're going to miss a wealth of historical information that will increase the accuracy of your diagnosis because it's the trajectory of symptoms over time that increases the uh, sensitivity and specificity of your diagnosis. And so just keep that in mind. I said before, is this a binary decision? It's either this or it's that. And 
how do you sort out if it's both? That's, that's where the rubber meets the road. So this is comorbidity for children with ADHD. You may have seen these slides again in the past. Only 30% of ADHD children don't have another psychiatric disorder. That means 70% of children with ADHD have another psychiatric disorder. And before you break your arm patting yourself on the back because you made a diagnosis of ADHD, if you haven't walked through the other possible concurrent disorders, you've only cooked the pie halfway. And your treatment as a result is probably going to be less effective than it could otherwise be. If you're looking at children though and they have these angry outbursts, how do you know what that is? Well, is it an impulsive reaction to high frustration for an ADHD individual? Or is it disruptive mood dysregulation, which is separate from a mood disorder? Or is it bipolar disorder? This is a, an irritable kid that has cyclical patterns of changes in mood. If you look at adults and you break this down by mood disorders, so about 40% of patients who have ADHD as an adult will have a mood disorder. So again, you want to do a comprehensive psychiatric evaluation, which means that you walk through the major psychiatric disorders that might occur in someone. Thank you.